So, we are at uh, module 2, uh, we are looking at uh, Van der Waals um, interactions and what we have done so far is uh, uh, these four you know uh, pieces. Uh, we have introduced um, Van der Waals interactions, we have talked about uh, uh, the molecular uh, origin of uh, Van der Waals interactions. Uh, then we briefly discussed about Van der Waals interaction between ions and molecules. Um, um, then how does one uh, think about Van der Waals forces between the particles um, and then we discussed uh, what is called as a scaling of Van der Waals interaction for macroscopic objects in which uh, we found that you know if you have uh, two particles separated by a particular distance d 1 and uh, uh, other set of particles separated by a distance d 2, uh, if the radius of these particles is r 1 identical particles and uh, in this case if it is r 2, okay, uh, as long as the sizes scale, sizes and the distances scale in a, a similar fashion, we said that the Van der Waals force of interaction in the case 1 will be exactly same as Van der Waals interaction in, you know, in, the, in the case 2. Okay. Uh, that is what we have done and uh, today what we will do is we will try and talk about these two aspects. One is we will try and uh, derive an expression for Van der Waals interaction between uh, semi infinite blocks um, uh, and then we will introduce a constant which is what is called as uh, Hamaker constant which is uh, um, useful if you really want to ca quantitatively calculate the Van der Waals force of interaction. So, what we are going to do is uh, a simple uh, uh, you know uh, derivation in which you have uh, block 1 okay, and uh, block 2, uh, they are separated by a distance d. In this case uh, d is the surface to surface separation distance. We would like to calculate what is the Van der Waals force of interaction between the two blocks okay and the reason why uh, they are called semi infinite uh, is because um, uh, so if you look at uh, you know if i just write a coordinate system okay uh, uh, so the length in this direction is finite okay and the length in this two directions are infinite okay uh, what i mean by this length is uh, the only thing that you have to worry about is the these dimensions are much much larger compared to the separation distance okay that's all that it actually means okay uh, so uh, how do we go about doing this okay and uh, the procedure followed is very simple so first what you do is uh, all of us know that you know if i take uh, like say a molecule uh, present in block 2 and a molecule present in block 1 and if they are separated by a distance d or you know or x whatever right the separation distance i know how to write an expression for the Van der Waals force of attraction between the two atoms, okay, one present in each of the blocks, right? Then what we'll do is we will consider a, a disk-like element. A disk-like element could be something like this, okay? So this is a a, a thin disk, okay, of uh, some dimension, okay, and then we will calculate what is the interaction between an atom and a, a disk-like element that we have considered in block 2 okay then that's a step 2 okay step 3 would be what i'll do is i'll integrate the van der waals interaction between this and you know the dislike element that we have considered over the entire volume to get an expression for the van der waals force of interaction between an atom and the entire block okay that's your step 3 okay then fourth step what we're going to do is we're going to assume that I am going to consider a, a thin section and then have this molecule embedded in that thin section and then again do another integration essentially to get the Van der Waals force of interaction between this block and this block. Okay, That is the procedure. Okay, Start with interaction between two atoms present in each block, then interaction between the atom in one block or a molecule in one block and a, a disk like element third step is to get an interaction between you know this molecule and the entire block then the block block interaction okay that's the the typical procedure right so <clears throat> so for that we, what we'll do is uh, we'll do some simple so the interaction between the atoms we already know right so we know that phi a or phi van der waals interaction would be something like 
some minus beta times x bar minus 6, right. We already know what is the van der Waals inter if I were to take one molecule here and maybe another molecule there, okay, the van der Waals interaction between the two is given by this, right. Uh, that is going to be minus because of the attraction, right. Now, what we do is we have a molecule here and I have a, a disc like element, okay, and uh, that disc like element uh, is so the, the this distance y, okay, is the the uh, from the center, okay, the what is the uh, this distance, okay, that is your y, okay, and the thickness of you know the disc is dy, okay. Uh, this um, the distance between the the surface of the block and the molecule is z, and I'm assuming that this particular element is at a z distance zeta from the surface. Okay, so this particular disc-like element is located somewhere inside the block, right? Uh, that's what we have written, right? So consider a molecule located at O, okay at a distance z from the surface that is this distance okay and uh, of course the assumption here is that block 1 and block 2 are made up of the the same material right that goes without saying that when we talk about when when, a, when we are trying to derive an expression for the van der waals force of attraction between the two blocks we are assuming that the 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 block 1 and block 2 are made up of the same material okay um, of course you can you know work out and you can think about um, deriving an expression for uh, two blocks if the materials they are made up of dissimilar material but for this particular um, uh, class we will assume that they are made up of the the same material okay then we are going to take a, a ring shaped volume element okay as i said it's at a distance z from the surface zeta from the surface now um, and of course the thickness of the there are two thickness right okay one is the the thickness you know along this uh, zeta other one is a the thickness along this y direction right and and uh, the two thicknesses are d zeta and dy okay so therefore uh, we know that the volume of this uh, you know uh, ring shaped element that we have considered is dv is equal to 2 pi y dy into dz right that's the the volume of the ring shaped element that has been considered is that okay right now <coughs> um, now if you look at uh, any molecule okay if you look at any molecule that is on on this disk i can say that every molecule on this disk okay because we are we are taking a disk which is of very small dz and dy i can assume that every molecule is at a a separation distance x right so I, I, I can say that so therefore the the this particular molecule is located at a distance x okay from all the the molecules in the ring shaped element right i can make that statement right um, then what you can do is i can actually write up an expression so instead of considering two single molecule the fact that i have considered a molecule you know in one block and a ring shaped element I can write an expression for what is the increment in the van der Waals force of attraction between the this molecule and all the molecules that you have in the ring shaped element right we can do that so um, that I can write it as d phi is equal to what do we write the increment in the van der Waals force of attraction okay when I have considered a molecule in one block and a ring shaped element in the other block instead of two molecules present in each of the blocks that d phi is going to be number of pairs of interaction multiplied by interaction per molecule right interaction per pair of molecule okay that's what we we have done right that is number of pairs multiplied by the interaction per pair is what, what is going to give you what is the increment in the van der waals force of attraction right so then how do we calculate the number of pairs 
how do you calculate number of pairs? So, we had defined rho n a by m, right? What does that give you? That is the number of number of atoms or number of molecules per unit volume, right? That is what it will give you, okay? Multiplied by the, the volume, okay? That is 2 pi y dy into d zeta, okay? That is the, the volume of the ring shaped element that we have considered multiplied by the interaction per pair is going to be minus beta times x power minus 6, right? That is the, the interaction, the increment in the interaction between the molecule and the block, okay? And in this case, molecule and the, um, the ring shaped element that we have considered, right? Okay, that is what this is, right? What is that? Uh, yeah, I mean, depending upon so so the question is: Is there an attraction? Is this is the attraction towards each other. For the entire block, both the blocks each other. Yeah, both the blocks towards. I mean, so uh, the one. Okay, so what what you can uh, so imagine? Uh, so this is the attraction between the blocks, right? I mean, are you saying that you know if I have block one, is it that the block one uh, drags the particles towards black two? Is that what you're trying to ask? Or, or no, they, we have to consider the angle. That's what which angle? Suppose it's a ring. Then mm -hmm. there will be an angle that we have to consider because the force is acting in this direction. No, no. See, uh, see, the simple concept that we are trying to do is, I mean, I think there's a reason why they have considered this ring-shaped uh, element because you know your x is going to be identical okay. right that's the reason why they have considered okay so now so when you say that, so what you are trying to say is that you know is it that uh, so your question is is it that this block is going to be moved in some other direction is that what you are trying to ask no, no. The force of attraction that we are considering Correct. is it towards the block the direction which it makes because we have two forces considering the ring why two why two, why, why two forces Suppose there is a ring, then equal in opposite direction, there will be two particles that attract it, right? Uh, okay. So okay. Ring, okay. Across okay. the diameter, there okay. will be two particles that attract it. No, in this case, what we are trying to do is, I, I have a molecule 1 here, mm -hmm. and, and uh, there is another molecule 1 there. What is the force of attraction between the two? Okay. Next, there is one here, and there is another molecule, of course, there, right? Because the, there are several, several molecules in the ring okay so we are talking about the force of attraction between the molecule one present here and the molecule there that's about it okay and then we ju just adding it right that's what we discussed you know when we talked about the van der waals you know interaction between macroscopic particles all that we are trying to say is that look it is the interaction between every atom or a molecule present in one with the every molecule or an atom present in the other one Okay, so it is the the mutual interaction between, you know, the molecules in each of the particles, and then the pairwise addition. Okay, in that connection, uh, it is an attraction towards each other. Okay, that's uh, what I would say at this point. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> right. So we know how we uh, wrote this up. Right. Now what I want to do is. I want to calculate the Van der Waals force of interaction between this molecule and all the molecules in this block. Okay, so what do we do for that? Okay, so we know that uh, uh, so this x, right? Uh, this x is the the separation distance. Okay, and we know that and x, as I said, for every atom or a molecule present on the disk because we are considering a very small uh, disk, this x is going to be same and I can relate x to the, the other distance that we have, right? You, you have z here, xi, zeta and y, therefore your x square is going to be z plus zeta whole square plus y square, okay? Therefore, 
combining these two what I can do is I can write d phi is equal to minus rho n a divided by m okay and I am going to take this constant beta and you have uh, 2 pi okay you have y dy uh, d zeta divided by instead of x x power 6 I am going to write as z plus zeta whole square plus y, y square to the power of 3 right we have done that now I have to integrate this expression to get what is the the total van der Waals force of attraction between this molecule and all the molecules in block 1 okay so that's going to be a, a double integral right because you know you have you know you have dy and d zeta here so i would have to do a, a double integral and uh, because the variation the y and zeta are not dependent what i can do is i can do uh, integration one by one so what i can do is i can consider the first term that is uh, y dy okay uh, divided by uh, z plus zeta whole square plus y square uh, to the power of 3 okay i can do the integral okay from um, uh, you know the distance y can i mean y can go from 0 to infinity right so if i do that i can substitute for if you say y square is equal to u uh, 2 um, y dy is going to be du therefore this becomes 1 over 2 uh, uh, du divided by z plus zeta whole square plus u to the power of 3 right okay and that is between 0 to infinity therefore this becomes 1 over 2 uh, if i integrate this this is going to be z plus zeta whole square plus u into minus 3 plus 1 divided by minus 3 plus 1 okay 0 to infinity that is equal to 1 over 2 uh, there is a minus 2 here that I will it will become minus 4 1 over 4 and uh, at infinity uh, you know you, you have 1 over z plus zeta uh, whole square plus u square right um, and 0 to infinity therefore this becomes 1 over 4 into 1 over uh, z plus zeta uh, at infinity this becomes b 0 right okay 0 minus 1 divided by z plus zeta to the power of 4 therefore you know uh, if I do the first integral what I get is 1 over 4 1 divided by z plus zeta to the power of 4 is what I get is that okay yeah <coughs> so you have yeah first it is be 0 first term is going to be 0 that is what I, I yeah, sorry okay first term is going to be 0 because I mean I have considered a ring shaped element okay and uh, if I say that you know the the coordinate system I am going to start with the center of the disk the locate you know the coordinates are 0 0 okay it can be infinite in the other direction but the block it's inside the block we are trying to calculate for the whole block so yeah that is also should be, should be the root of the block, right? yeah so the, the so y is the see so if you go back here right see that is your y right so i can have a very small disk okay so essentially you can your y could vary from 0 when you are at the center and you, it can go all the way up to infinity should not be the root of the block yeah, yeah, I mean, so all that we are trying to say that these distances we are thinking about is, uh, uh, of course, if you see, we are talking about when you say uh, semi infinite blocks, okay. So, all that we are trying to say is that look, uh, see, we have been saying that 
van der Waals force of interactions. Uh, typically, if you um, uh, work with any case where the van der Waals force of interaction, we said that you know plus or minus 10 nanometer, you know, up to about 10 nanometer is when you should bother about the van der Waals force of interaction, right? That means any distance more than that, it it doesn't matter, okay? But for the the sake ease of derivation. What you're doing is you're assuming that, okay, it's a semi-infinite block. That means your the dimension that you're of the block that you're considering are much much larger than the separation distance that you're trying to deal with. Okay, that's the only uh, significance here. Okay. So similarly, I can do the yeah. You have a question. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is is that is this okay? Everybody gets this point, right? Uh, that essentially is the number of pairs multiplied by you know the interaction per pair. That's okay, right? And then all that we are doing here is the, your separation distance is related to your you know z, uh, zeta, and y through this relationship, okay? And then therefore. And I said if you want to the interaction between this molecule and the entire block, okay, I would have to do a, a double integral, right? And uh, because the variation in y and zeta are independent, I can do integration one by one, okay? So we considered one of the, you know, the y dy divided by z plus zeta whole square plus y square to the power of three, right? And you can substitute for you know y square is equal to u, uh, two y dy is equal to du, right? And therefore, I can instead of y dy, I can substitute dy divided by two. So we've done here, okay? Uh, divided by z plus zeta whole square plus instead of y square, I'm substituting u, okay? And if I integrate this, I get z plus zeta whole square plus u to the power of minus 3 plus 1 divided by minus 3 plus 1, okay. Therefore, I have a 1 over 2 and 2 minus 1 over 4 factor here, okay. And uh, and uh, and therefore, I have 1 divided by z plus zeta whole square plus u whole square. And when you have y is, y is infinite, this becomes 0 minus 1 divided by. So, in this, in this case, you know, when you say y goes from um, you know 0 to infinity u also goes from 0 to infinity right okay therefore when u is z infinity this becomes 0 minus 1 over z plus zeta to the power of 4 okay so that's we essentially end up with this okay similarly i can do the the next one now so therefore now i have done this so therefore your phi is going to be Okay, uh, I'll just write those things back. Uh, rho uh, n a by m into beta two pi. Okay, now integral from zero to infinity d zeta divided by z plus uh, zeta whole to power four. Right? Okay. Because see, we had, we were doing a double integral. Okay, so this I am retaining this, okay, and the result of you know integrating this, okay, would be right, and of course I have one over four, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, yeah, there's also negative here. Sorry, yeah. Okay, let's do th this derivation. So, um, so one over uh, if you do in a similar way, so integral of uh, d divided by z plus to the power of 4, okay, 0 to infinity, if you do that. So, therefore, this becomes uh, again z plus uh, zeta minus 4 plus 1 divided by minus 4 plus 1 going from 0 to infinity. Is it okay? Yeah. Therefore, this becomes uh, 1 over z plus zeta whole cube 0 to infinity and I have one minus 1 over 3 here. 
okay therefore your phi uh, is going to be again so this minus 1 over 3 into um, this becomes uh, 0 minus 1 divided by z q is it okay so therefore your phi becomes there's one on our four uh, minus minus we become plus right this is going to be one over three into z cube therefore if i substitute this back here so i have one over 12 four three is a 12 okay uh, rho n a divided by m into beta 2 pi into 1 over z cube with a minus yes because the minus sign is carries okay so that's the so this is now what we've done is this is the interaction between the the molecule one that was here and all the molecules of block one okay um, okay that's what is actually done here okay so we had this as an incremental in the interaction so we wrote x square in terms of you know the other distances okay the combining the two expressions we wrote this and then in doing a double integral okay for varying y from 0 to infinity and zeta from 0 to infinity we essentially end up with uh, you know uh, an expression like this right that's in the end that's what we have okay that's again attractive uh, there's a negative sign here okay and that's the the number um, per unit volume okay and uh, beta is the the coefficient and we had 2 pi and 1 over z cube 